Okay, ladies and gentlemen, sorry uh, for the delay. Uh, thank you for joining us for today's webinar, Sino-Dutch Collaboration in the Guangdong Offshore Wind Market. My name is uh, Arjen Schutten. I am the man Managing Director of Holland Home of Wind Energy. And uh, today I will be your moderator. Uh, before I introduce the agenda uh, uh, and the presenters to you, I would like to, co uh, like to cover a few house keeping uh, topics, please mute your uh, microphone. Uh, in this session, we have uh, simultaneous translation. So please click at the bottom if you would like to listen to uh, the Chinese translation or the English uh, translation. If you want to ask a question during the webinar, uh, please use the chat window in your screen and state cl clearly to who you have the question. And some of the qu questions will be already addressed online and some other questions will be touched upon during the, uh, the Q&A today. Um, so also to the presenters, I would like to say, uh, monitor the chat window closely and do not hesitate to answer a question during this session. The questions that will not be uh, discussed today in this webinar will be um, uh, touched upon in, uh, in the email at a later st stage. Uh, this webinar will also be uh, recorded and made avail uh, available for review in a later stage. Ladies and gentlemen, let's start. China is the world's largest, largest investor in renewable energy and its role as a global player in renewable energy will only increase. In China, the main drivers for renewable energy um, like offshore wind are CO2, uh, CO2 reduction and an ever increasing energy demand. In the coming years, China will surpass the UK as the biggest offshore wind market in the world. And offshore wind farms are being built in a tremendous uh, pace and much quicker than in many uh, countries in Europe. Where we sometimes need five years to build an offshore wind farm in China, they can do it in two years. As a managing director of Holland Home of Wind Energy, I've learned that the Chinese offshore wind industry is very open to adopt new technology. China and the Netherlands are already working together on many levels in offshore wind, but I certainly believe that we can intensify our co cooperation. Sino-Dutch cooperation in the offshore wind uh, market on, um, on, on Guangdong is the topic of today's webinar. And uh, today's agenda is as follows. Uh, first, we have a small opening speech by Mr. Michiel Bierkens, Consul General of the Kingdom of the Netherlands in Guangdong. And after uh, his opening speech, uh, Mr. Yuan Guo Kai of the Guangdong Electric Power and Design Institute will inform us about the offshore wind develop uh, developments in Guangdong province. After his presentation, we will watch a pre-recorded video presented by Mr. Min Hu of Guangzhou Salvage one of the biggest marine contractors in China. And this presentation will be uh, followed by a short pre-recorded talk show with Pete, Pete Warner of TNO, a knowledge institute in the Netherlands, and Mr. Jan Krijn Mosselman of SPT Offshore. Both companies have a lot of experience on the Chinese offshore wind market and will share uh, their experience with you. Last but, last, last but not least, Mr. Fushin of Royal Dutch Shell We'll, uh, we'll talk about Shell's offshore winds ambitions and activities. Um, I believe that after Mr. Shin Fu, Fu's presentation, we still have a, uh, some time for questions and answers, um, but let us not waste any time. Uh, Mr. Michiel Bierkens, the floor is yours. Thank you, uh, Ian. Good morning to our Dutch audience and xiao hao to our uh, Chinese viewers. I'm very glad to be here today and to say a few words in the opening of our second Sino-Dutch wind, offshore wind cooperation webinar, which is organized by Holland Home of Wind Energy and our Consul General, together with our local Chinese partner, Guangdong Electric Power and Design Institute. And a special welcome to those in the audience who also joined us in our first webinar that we held last Thursday. The Dutch government has set a clear target that by 2030, a minimum of 20% of all energy used in the Netherlands must come from renewable sources. The Netherlands also wants to achieve zero CO2 emissions from its energy supply by 2050. Now, offshore wind is an important form of renewable energy to meet these goals. 
and plays a vital role in the energy transition. The North Sea off the Dutch coast is an excellent place to install wind turbines because of its relatively shallow waters, its favorable wind climate, the good port connectivity, as well as the amount of industrial energy consumers. The cost of offshore wind energy have fallen significant, significantly in recent years since the Dutch government has reshaped its policy for offshore wind energy with its full control and information transparency. Offshore wind farms also offer significant economic opportunities. A large domestic market gives the Dutch offshore wind sector the opportunity to develop expertise and therefore continue to build on its strong international position. Dutch companies already hold a market share of approximately 25% of the total European offshore wind energy market. To achieve such impressive track records, a lot of investment is needed in innovation that, just, that does not just focus on the Dutch market. The Netherlands' strong maritime reputation, but also international climate agreements are opening up opportunities in international China's offshore wind power has increased more than any other nation in the past two years. Guangdong province has shown strong ambitions in developing its offshore wind industry and has reserved 46% of the total project pipeline of the whole country. This offers great potential for developing the Dutch footprint in the local Guangdong market. Our Consulate General here in Guangzhou has cooperated with Holland Home of Wind Energy and the Netherlands Enterprise Agency, RVO, to promote the Dutch offshore wind sector, as well as the Sino-Dutch collaboration in both South China and the Netherlands. In the past, we organized trade missions, seminars, technical trainings, and masterclasses. We've also been supporting individual companies to find potential partners and identify business opportunities on both sides. The COVID-19 pandemic, however, makes all these physical visits impossible. As a result, we have teamed up with Holland Home of Wind Energy to organize two online webinar sessions. We have received a strong support from our close partners, Wangdrong Electric Power Design Institute and RVO. And let me take this opportunity to thank them once again for this. Without the great efforts, we would not have been able to have this event here today. I hope that the second webinar will be as interesting as the first one. Following last week's webinar, we received many questions on the issue of wind to hydrogen, and we are planning to organize a third webinar on this specific subject. For now, I wish you all a very interesting and fruitful webinar. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Michiel Bierkens for your kind opening words. Then I would like uh, now to give the floor to Mr. Yuan Guokui of the Guangdong Electric Power and Design Institute. He will inform us about the offshore wind developments on the Guangdong market, the Guangdong offshore wind market. Mr. Yuan, the floor is yours. Okay, let's go. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. It's a great honor to give my presentation. Today, I would like to introduce the development of offshore wind power in Guangdong province. And there are two parts. Let's start with my first part, the offshore wind planning and project progress in, in Guangdong. This is the reserve and the distribution of offshore wind energy in China. You can see from this slide, the potential of offshore wind power at water depths between 5 to 50 meters and a height of 70 meters is about 500 million kilowatts. So the offshore wind energy resource in China is very rich. In the past five years, China's offshore wind has made great achievements. We have uh, the goal we set five years ago has been achieved. The goal is that by 2020, the construction scale of offshore wind in this country shall reach 10 gigawatts, and uh, the cumulative grid connected capacity shall reach five gigawatts. It can be said that we have greatly exceeded 
this goal. This is situation in China as a whole. So how about the situation in Guangdong? Let's take a look. I think you are very familiar with this planning. In this planning, by end of 2020, more than 12 gigawatts will shall be under construction or in operation, including more than two gigawatts shall be in operation. In fact, only eight gigawatts project have start have start construction, and uh, only maybe the connect the grid connected capacity just exceeded one gigawatt. So the actual condition, the actual situation is a little bit lower than the target. However, as the state subsidy ends at the end of this year, you know, only offshore wind farm that can be connected to the grid with all capacity at the end of this year can get a can get the electricity price of 0.585 yuan per kilowatt. So there will be an explosive increase in grid connection this year. There's some details. You can see from this table, there are many projects that are under offshore construction, but the progress is not as fast as people imagined. Up to now, only three projects have been connected to the grid with all capacity, and the other projects are at the peak of the construction. There are still some projects that has not started this construction due to some reasons. Overall, the development of offshore wind in Guangdong is still progressing steadily. I think people is very interesting, very interested in with the offshore wind new policy. Um, people are now concerned about whether the offshore wind planning has been revised, whether there will be subsidies for offshore wind uh, after this year. If the hive, how to subsidize them? Frankly speaking, I also don't have a definite answer. Up to now, no updated planning has been officially released. There are no any new policy. But what I need to tell you is that the sustainable development trend of offshore wind in Guangdong is certain. We should have such a confidence. Two months ago, our President Xi Jinping said that China will increase its national contribution, adopt more powerful policies and measures, strive to reach the peak of the carbon dioxide emission by 2030 and uh, strive to achieve the carbon neutrality by 2060. And uh, we will do what we see. So based on this goal, the scale of the offshore wind planning will only increase. Regarding the offshore wind subsidy policy, I think uh, Guangdong province may provide subsidy in 2022 and 2023, and no more subsidy in 2024 and after 2024. But the final specific subsidy is uh, not determined yet. Everyone uh, will wait and see, but I think it will be soon. Next, I will uh, talk about the, some challenges and opportunities. 
I think the biggest challenge is the cost reduction. This is the relationship between electricity price and the internal rate of return. You can see that the impact of the electricity on protein yield is very large. According to the current electricity price, the IRR of the most of projects are very good. But if the, there's no subsidy suddenly, few projects will be profitable. And, uh, and the, most of the projects, and maybe all the projects, the um, yields are all negative. So the drop in electricity price has brought challenges and opportunities to all the whole offshore wind industry in China. That means the whole offshore wind industry in China must cut cost together. And there are challenges, there are opportunities. For example, large scale and intensive development of offshore wind. At present, many of our wind farms are 300 megawatts each. In the future, they may all be in 1 million kilowatts. This will be a great help to reduce the cost. Secondly, the technology improvement. I think the technological innovation is an essential way to reduce the cost. I will talk about this later. Suddenly, more and more wind farm may adopt EPC model to fully mobilize in in society of all parties to reduce the cost. Fourthly, the integrate with other industries like hydrogen energy, fisheries. I know the hydrogen energy is very popular in, in Dutch. It is, it is the same in China. The fourthly, for, uh, fifthly, the sustainable development environment like EU, I think in the future, the offshore wind in China will end a virtual circle. So in short, I think opportunities are greater than challenges. I take the Dutch company developed in China as an example. In last August, the first jacket box, jacket Suction Box Foundation was successfully installed in China. With, with the successful installation of such a foundation, a number of offshore wind farms will soon apply such a foundation. SPT demonstrated very well in this construction of a suction bucket, but the process has not been smooth. In my impression, it took them more than two years to make some breakthroughs. In China, there is a process for the application of new technology. I think it is the same in other regions. When the opportunity comes, you can seize it and show them well. Your product or your service will be accepted in China. For more Dutch companies, how to, enter to, how to enter the Chinese market? I have two suggestions. First, your product or your services or your uh, technologies are be considered trustworthy and have some exp successful experience in other markets. For example, in, in European market, like I just hammer, I, I have to say hammer is very popular now in China because it is very uh, trustworthy and uh, has much experience, successful experience in, in European. Secondly, 
your products or your services can indeed bring cost reduction for Chinese offshore wind industry. I think in the era of the no subsidy, you will have much more opportunities. Mr. Yuan, I cannot hear you. Um, can you all hear me? I can hear you, Ian. Okay, great. I, I couldn't um, hear the last words of Mr. Uh, Mr. Yuan, but Mr. Yuan, thank you very much uh, for your very interesting uh, um, presentation. I think what, what we learned is that um, the focus of offshore wind in China is uh, on the provinces of Jiangsu, Zhejiang, Fujian, and Guangdong. And uh, together with our diplomatic network in China, Holland Home of Wind uh, uh, Energy also focuses on these three, on, the, on these uh, four provinces. We team up with the Netherlands Business Support Office in Nanjing um, to cover uh, Jiangsu province, and with our consulate uh, general in in uh, in Shanghai, we cover Zhejiang, and with our consulate general in Guangzhou, we focus on Fujian and Guangdong. Very important is, is the topic of, uh, of cost reduction. Um, at the moment, the, 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 the offshore wind farms in China are very profitable, but that can change if, if the subsidy will disappear. And very important for Dutch companies that want to be active on the um, on the Chinese offshore wind markets, is if I listen very closely to Mr. Yuan, it's very important to have a reliable track record, uh, preferably in, in Europe, but still uh, uh, your, your technology must be innovative and add value to the Chinese market. And secondly, very important, um, your technology should bring cost reduction to the Chinese market. And um, Ms. Yuan believes that there are more opportunities coming for Dutch companies uh, at this moment. So that's um, um, really interesting. Then let's go to the following uh, presentation. This presentation is uh, by Mr. Uh, Hu Min from um, Guangdong uh, Salvage. Uh, Guangdong Selfridge is one of the biggest um, uh, contractors in, uh, in China. And this uh, presentation has been uh, pre-recorded. Pre uh, the presentation is uh, uh, by Mr. Hu Min. But uh, today, uh, for answering questions, Mr. Chang Li will be available. So let's start with um, the, the video of uh, Guangdong Salvage. Good morning and good afternoon, everyone. First of all, I would like to thank Holland Home of Wind Energy, GEDI, the Guangdong Electric Power Design Institute, and the Consulate General of Netherlands in Guangzhou to build this dialogue platform to give us a great opportunity to communicate with each other on the offshore wind power construction. Uh, I'm Hu Min from Guangzhou Salvage the manager of offshore wind engineering section. The subject of today's visitation is offshore wind power construction, capability and development. First of all, I will start off by giving you a brief overview of Guangzhou Savage. Guangzhou Savage is a state-owned institution direct under the Ministry of Transport in China. Rescue and salvage is our responsibility as a state institution. But uh, also, we engaged in offshore engineering like oil, gas, and wind farm construction. We also engaged in towing and transportation. 
Turing Engineering and Shipbuilding. Uh, currently, we own the biggest semis of most boats built in the world. And Guando Savage owns the fleet of uh, over 60 big vessels. Guando Savage has uh, 2,300 employees. 600 of them are highly skilled professionals. Guando Savage also an international marine contractor. We have the project all over the world, especially in southeast in China. The advantage of Guangzhou Savage is that we own all kinds of professional vessels and equipment. This is the, uh, our main marine spread of Guangzhou Savage. We have the Derrick barge, we have semi motor barge, and also the Targs and the cargo barge. And uh, we have the very professional uh, equipment like the ROV, and also we have the piling hammer. This is a 4,000-ton floating crane with DB2 capability. This ship was built in 2007 and upgraded to DB2 in 2017. This ship has been uh, put into use in the offshore wind construction project. They are mainly used in the monopile mono foundation, jacket foundation, and also suction pile foundation installation. This Jaka platform with DB2 system is uh, Hua Xianglong, is uh, 1,200 tons. And uh, this ship was uh, deliver, delivered last year in uh, August and uh, put into use in September. This ship is just for the turbine installation. Uh, right now, she's in, in Yangjiang, which is the Guangdong province, for the 5.5 megawatts and also 6.5 megawatts wind turbines installation. And in the future, we will use, we'll use this vessel to install 8 megawatts turbines. Uh, this is our another ship with 900 tons, uh, Derrick barge. And uh, this is our semi submersible barge and uh, cargo barge. And we have uh, all kinds of the talks. Uh, we have uh, Hydraulic hammers from the IHC 1200 to 3000 kilojoules. And in last year, which is uh, 2020, we built a 3500 kilojoules hammers, which is uh, manufactured in China. This hammer is the biggest, biggest one in China, and uh, she will be put into use at the end, end of this month in the Zhangjiang Wind Farm project. Uh, you can see the picture is that this is the, uh, the, the piling position frame that we, Guangzhou Savage, have uh, designed and also fabricated. They have uh, been designed and fabricated in 2018, which we have foreseen the booming offshore wind power market. So we, we, we just uh, designed and fabricated them to, for the preparation of the project or the upcoming. The, the, the piling position frame have uh, have uh, applied for the four leg jacket and the monopile foundation installation. We have designed the suction bucket style. We have designed the auxiliary pile style, which is very useful. And, and right now, currently, we have, they have been successfully applied to many projects. This is the uh, ROV that's uh, owned by Guangzhou Savage. It's a 3000 meters world class. And uh, we have all kinds of the equipment from the air diving to the mixed diving system. And we have the diamond wire saw and the oil recovery equipment. Guangzhou Savage actually have uh, participated in oil gas industry in uh, 1980 and become a very important contractors in this area. And since 2017, the, um, since the offshore wind market in Guangdong began to boom, Guangzhou Savage also participated in this area. And uh, this is the uh, main experience of oil gas since uh, 2012, because you can see from the list that since before uh, before 2017, our main experience are all in the oil gas uh, industry. But uh, since uh, 2017, this uh, this oil gas in market has been began to going down. So we have uh, gradually 
focused on the offshore wind market. Um, actually, we have uh, done the first uh, the, the wind meter tower in, in, in Hong Kong, which we cooperate with SPT for the suction pile foundations. And uh, after that, we have begun into this market since 2017. But uh, before the late 12, uh, 1219, the project um, most basically are the, the wind meter power and also the pile testing project for the wind farm. But uh, right now, actually, it seems the, uh, the, the, the rapid boom of the, the Guangdong, Guangdong Wind Farm project, the, the market, we have uh, eight offshore wind power, the project con contracts, and all in Guangdong province. We have the, um, from the monopile jacket in foundation type and the suction pile type and the floating foundation type in the, of this project. And the, the project, the type turbines are 5.5 megawatts and also 6.5 megawatts type. So I will give you a brief instruction of our several typical project. Uh, this project is uh, is the CCP Yangjiang Nanpeng Island 300 megawatts offshore wind farm installation. This is the, uh, contracted by Guangzhou, uh, Guangzhou Savage since uh, 19, 20, 2019. And they have five, 55 turbines in total. The, all the turbines are jacket foundations, the full leg. And um, this, this jacket is uh, piling before jacket installation. The jacket weight is uh, 814 tons. The water depth is from the 23 meters to 32 meters. This is a very typical the jacket installation. And uh, you can see from the picture that uh, we have uh, used uh, a suction bucket type, the piling, piling frame. And this picture is that we uh, do the piling job. After we have uh, inserted all the pile into this piling frame, we're going to use a hammer to just uh, drive the, 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 the piles into the, into the water until the design, design depth. After the pile has been positioned, we're going to lift, uh, lift the jacket on the piles, and then, then we uh, use it towards the turbines. This type is uh, 5.5 megawatts, the, the wind turbines. Okay, this is the, uh, another project which is very near, near this, this project I just mentioned. And this, uh, this uh, uh, is a CGN, the Yangjiang Nanpeng Island Offshore Wind Farm Foundation Installation. The, this foundation is monopile. The monopile actually the, uh, at that time is the largest and heaviest monopile foundation in China uh, in, two, in 2019, but, but not now, so they're not updated. And the pile diameter is 7.8 meters to 8.4 meters. The average weight of the monopile is 1,500 tons. But right now, uh, the project in the Jiayang, in Jiayang uh, wind farm, which have uh, also uh, constructed by Guangzhou Savage, the, uh, the pile weight is already reached 1,900, which is very heavy. And uh, the water depth is uh, 22 meters to 31 meters. Uh, okay, say so this from the uh, picture that uh, we use another another kind of uh, uh, the piling frame to do the uh, insulation. Uh, this is the uh, also uh, CGN Shangwei Houhu 500 megawatts offshore wind farm EPC project, and also this is the uh, an another another frame, the, the piling frame that the design and fabricate by Guangzhou Savage. This uh, also the monopile foundation, the pile meter is uh, 7, 8, 7, 8 uh, meters to uh, 8.4 meters. The average is uh, 1,900 tons. So I have, uh, this is the uh, Three Gorges Sharpa 400 megawatts offshore wind farm, the phase one project. Uh, I like to mention this project because uh, this is a suction pile foundation. Actually, there we have uh, uh, three foundation of this project. 
And uh, this is the first official suction pie foundation applied in China, and they very successfully finished this relation in, in last July. Actually, uh, Quantum Savage have a very rich experience in suction pie construction oil gas, but uh, this is the first time for the Wind Turbine Foundation. So in this uh, project, we have cooperated with the SBT, who have a very strong capability in uh, suction pie design in Netherlands, and the GS and SPT are hoping that we can promote a suction pie method in China. And uh, last week, actually, we have just uh, got another suction pie foundation contract in the CGN offshore farm project. And uh, meanwhile, we also uh, participate in the floating wind turbine project, and uh, we are responsible for the fabrication and the construction. Uh, since the project is still in a, in a maintaining secrecy, so I'm afraid I'm, I'm not, uh, can, I cannot share much information right now. But uh, one thing I can tell is that uh, the Chinese wind power owners and the clients have a very open mind with this, this kind of new technology. So I'll bring this to a future development trend. Uh, I think I don't have to mention that uh, the, the, the rapid booming of the of the offshore wind power market, because uh, according to the Chinese uh, 13th, the f the five year plan, uh, actually we have 10,000 10, megawatts will be under construction by 2020 in China, but uh, by September 2020, only 7,005 megawatts have been grid connected estimated. So the rest of the, uh, the the turbines will be installed in this year, which is 2021. And so by the end of 2021, the 20,000 megawatts is predicted to be uh, grid connected. So uh, right now in China, the mainly developed in coastal water, uh, which is under 50 meters. The foundation types are the adapted in China as follows the uh, high-rise pile cap foundation, and monopile foundation, and jacket foundation, and also suction pile foundations. Uh, actually, the high-rise pile cap foundation is uh, mainly used in uh, Jiangsu province, which is very shallow water. So they are no longer being used right now. So um, actually, currently, the main adapted foundation type is monopile. The water type is from the 10 to 40 meters. The diameter is uh, the maximum right now is uh, 9.8 meters, which is in Jiayang Shenquan, the wind farm project. The length is up to one, 120 meters. The width is uh, the, the maximum actually we have uh, um, now is uh, 1,900, 1,000, sorry, 1,900. And this kind of the monopile, this. Uh, Actually, we have done it very quick right now. We have very high uh, operation efficiency. So average date of the construction is usually 2.5 days to, so we can, uh, we can uh, finish the monopile installation. And also, uh, we have right now in uh, the jacket foundation is, uh, is a four leg and three leg. And the main used is four leg right now in, uh, in, in Yangjiang and also in Shapa, which is all in Guangdong province. The water depth is from the 10 to 50, uh, 45 meters. They have a uh, efficiency, efficiency is not uh, as efficiency as uh, monopile, but uh, they are not very required a very large insulation equipment like the folding crane. And the suction pile actually uh, first adapted in the Sancha Shapa, 400 megawatts offshore, the phase one. And uh, this kind of uh, uh, foundation is that we want to savage want to promote in China because this is uh, easy to be con constructed. And uh, since the, uh, the, the, the water and also the foundation gets deeper and larger, and um, so the, the China is going, going to, uh, to find uh, another solution for this kind of uh, 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 foundations. In uh, SPIC, Jiang, uh, Jinghai, 
um, of Shaw Wind Farm project we have just uh, mentioned. The monopi is 120 meters long and also the 9.8 9, 9 meters diameter. The weight is up to 1,900 tons, which has also reached the limitation of fabrication and construction capability. Actually, uh, right now for the fabrication yard in China that uh, we have uh, built less than 10 meters. So or if the uh, diameter is uh, over 10, so uh, the capability is uh, not sufficient right now. And also uh, for the pious uh, insulation, actually in China we have uh, 12,000 tons uh, capacity for in crane, but only one. So, uh, so the weight is still a limitation for the monopire. So in another wind farm project in SPIC, in the, the water depth is 46 meters. The monotire foundation type is no longer suitable because the weight can over 2,000. So the jacketed foundation type has been adapted. The, for the future development, Guangzhou Savage is thinking uh, of the suction pipe foundation, so which is uh, being uh, adapted by uh, a lot of the, 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 the wind power owners and for the actually we are just to get a uh, contract by, uh, by the uh, CGN. And this is the uh, floating uh, foundation that we think that are going to be uh, used in the future. And uh, Quando Savage also uh, participated in a floating project for the future preparations. If the water is going to uh, deeper, and uh, the, the foundations must have a very open way to solve this problem. Actually, uh, we have thought of this kind of the, uh, like semi submersible and also the TLP, the SPAR. Actually, uh, Guangzhou Savage has also participated in the research project with the CGN, with the TLP type foundations. And um, I think there will be a very exper experimental the modules in, in next year. So we will see what will happen. And this, uh, for the semi submersible, we're gonna, actually we are doing the constructed right now, fabrication, and we will install one experimental in this two line for the semi submersible uh, floating the, the, the wind turbines. Okay, uh, that's all for the presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Guangdong Salvage, for this uh, beautiful presentation. We learned a lot from this presentation. We learned that uh, Guangdong Salvage is a very experienced state-owned uh, contractor in China. Like many contractors, also in the Netherlands, it started from the traditional oil and gas sector and uh, involved now also in offshore wind since uh, 2017. Quantum Salvos has a very big fleet, high-end installation tools. Some of the installation, uh, installation tools are also from uh, the Netherlands, like uh, the hydraulic hammer from IHC. They work together with uh, companies like SPT Offshore. Um, yeah, there are limits to the monopiles. Um, I heard Mr. Uh, Humin said uh, monopiles with a 9.8 diameter and 1900 tons are a little bit the limitations. What I see in the Netherlands, I looked it up at one of the big uh, monopile um, manufacturers in the Netherlands, SIF Group. They are now currently producing monopiles of 11 diameter with uh, 220, uh, 200, 2250 tons of weight. Um, and yeah, limitations are, are not reached uh, in the Netherlands so far. Um, Guangdong Salvage is very satisfied with the co cooperation with SPT Offshore and they want to install more future uh, projects with the suction bucket piles. And Guangdong uh, Salvage is also involved in the floating wind. And at this moment, uh, there's one project uh, in secrecy stage uh, but they are open for discussion and cooperation in due time. Okay, um, now I'm looking also at Karen. Karen, are we going to show uh, now the uh, session Dutch experience on the Dutch offshore wind market with uh, Mr. 
uh, Jan Krijn Mosselman from SPD Offshore and Piet Warner from Knowledge Institute TNO. Uh, yes, we will start with the video first. Okay, we will start with a pre-recorded uh, video. It's um, uh, taken at the DOB Academy in Delft in, um, on uh, the 9th of December. And it is a discussion with Mr. Pete Warner from Knowledge uh, Institute TNO and Jan Krijn Mosselman from SPT Offshore on their experience on the Chinese offshore wind market. I think we can start with, uh, with, um, with the video. Good day, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to this pre-recorded uh, China webinar. My name is Arjen Schutten and I'm the Managing Director of Holland Home of Wind Energy. It's my pleasure to be uh, the moderator for this session, the Dutch experience on the Chinese offshore wind market. Ladies and gentlemen, we all know that uh, the UK is still the largest offshore wind uh, market in the world for offshore wind uh, with about 9.7 gigawatts in operation. However, China is catching, uh, catching up rapidly. China is currently the third largest offshore wind energy market in the world with about 6.8 gigawatt in, uh, in operation. And GWEC, the Global Wind Energy Council, believes that in the coming years at least 7.5 gigawatt of offshore wind will be connected to the grid. And, uh, and that will mean that China will be in the future, the very near future, uh, the biggest offshore uh, wind market in the world. In China, uh, the provinces with most installed offshore wind capacity are Jiangsu, Fujian and Guangdong. And today we are going to have a closer look at the Chinese offshore wind market. Here in the studio today are Mr. Pete Warner. Uh, Pete is business de developer at TNO. And uh, Mr. Jan Krijn Mosselman, he is commercial director of SPT Offshore. We are going to have a short discussion on their experience on the Chinese offshore wind uh, market. Gentlemen, welcome to the studio. Thank you. Uh, Pete, can you please um, introduce TNO uh, to the audience and tell what kind of services TNO offers on the Chinese offshore wind market? Thank you very much, yes. I am Pete Wanner, Senior Business Developer of TNO. TNO has been founded by law, by the Dutch law, in 1932 as the Applied Science Research Institute. And ECN, that's the stream that I originally come from, has been founded in 1955, originally as a nuclear research institute. In, in 2018, both institutes have been merged together as one big applied research institute where our unit energy transition focuses on renewable energy. In 1975, the ECN part fully uh, focused on renewable energy because then we had the first energy crisis in the Netherlands and then we switched to wind energy, to biomass digestion, to solar, and we developed many, many, many patents. And also one, our leading position was developed from those days onwards. The fields that TNO do is very, very wide, and they are on this slide, so I want to tell them. And I am from the unit Energy Transition, and we fully focus on the renewable energy being biomass, being solar, and being, of course, wind energy, which is my division. We are with 50 people, mainly working out of Patten in the northern parts of the Netherlands. We very much focus on wind turbine technology, developing ever cheaper wind energy technology. And that also de largely depends on the size, where you see in the dimensions that the wind turbines now grow almost to the size of Eiffel Tower. It's not only the wind turbine, of course the turbine is very much integrated into a wind farm and also we make wind farms operate more smart and more dancing together as one orchestra. And we are very much working on the next generation turbines, also not only bottom fixed, but also floating, being also bigger than 50 megawatt, which is around the corner and which will grow onwards after that. We have the design tools for those large rotors because always the rotor, the aerodynamics are the motor of the wind turbine. We are very much looking into developing the next generation operation maintenance because that's now a big part of cost reduction. Installation is typically the business that Dutch industry is very much present in. So we're also working together with them to optimize that industry. And ultimately cost has to go down. So we extend lifetime by improving turbine technology. Those are our focus areas in wind energy. That is overall the TNO wind energy division from Patton. 
Ja. En kan je elaborate on what kind of services you offers, uh, especially for the Chinese market? We are uh, basically a research institute as appointed by law. So we are not a software house, we are not a consultant. Also our hourly rates are not uh, fixed for that. But because of our knowledge position, we are very much offering cutting edge knowledge to help Chinese industry develop onwards. And so we do research with them, deploying technology we have developed in Europe, applying that on Chinese wind farms. And typically we also get then access to operational large scale operational data, which again helps us forward in developing new technology. So it's, it's a win-win. And you see, we, we help them in, in developing next generation technology in wind turbine technology with their wind farm, with their wind turbine manufacturers. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Pete. Uh, Jan Krein, can you please introduce SPT Offshore? Yes, of course. SPT Offshore stands for Suction Pile Technology. Worldwide, we installed over 600 suction piles in offshore renewable and oil and gas. We design, fabricate and install suction piles or provide suction services for installation. Why suction piles? The suction pile foundations reduce offshore installation time and risk. They provide a cost reduction as no temporary support or leveling equipment is required. And they are environmental friendly. We don't disturb the environment with noise. How do suction piles work? They are lowered to the seabed until self weight penetration, which creates a seal. Then water is discharged and the pressure difference pushes the pile into the soil. This is all monitored with accurate uh, pressure sensors. Our pumps are developed and tested in our yard uh, in, in the Netherlands. Um, we build our equipment ourselves. We have an in-house uh, geotechnical and structural design department um, where we de design the foundations uh, with our clients. Um, we are an innovative company. This is an alternative scale protection system which automatically unfolds when the suction pile is installed. In China, we are involved in the Jiangxi Shaba project and the Fujian Shangla project, uh, which will be installed next year. This is the Hong Kong Medmaster, which was installed in 2014. Thank you, Yang Krang. Gentlemen, in the very near future, China will surpass the UK, that are the predictions, as the biggest offshore wind market in the world. Pete, the first question to you is, how would you describe the Chinese offshore wind market in terms of maturity or advancement? I think there is, there is several levels of uh, maturity to be described. In learning by doing, I think the Chinese market is, is very much overtaking the European market. Bankability is a big topic in Europe. I think that's less of a topic in China. So volumes, rolling out volumes, creating new turbines that drive the cost down, that's very much happening in China and in an enormous scale. Enormous scale. And, and what about the, the technology being used? It's upgrading really quickly. I think West European, Western turbines are more advanced. We see now 12, 13, 14 megawatts, but turn, China is catching up quite quickly. The, the first 11 megawatts have seen the light and further bigger turbines are developed. So it's happening quickly. And, uh, Jan Krein, you're uh, at the moment uh, implementing a project, offshore wind project in, in China. What is your experience so far? Yeah, in the Jude, it's, it's an incredible growth. Uh, where in Europe, we transfer from gray energy uh, to green energy. In China, they want to tr uh, transfer as well, but they have an, also an, an enormous increasing demand in energy. So that's why they need to go very fast. They don't look indeed, like Pete was saying, to bankability, but they need energy now. And that's, uh, that's why they have a fast track project and they have a constantly a lack in resources, um, although there are a lot of resources available. So there you, but there also you see the, the challenges um, uh, which, which are created because they are, they are not afraid to, 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 to choose new ideas just to go faster. Like your technology is quite, well, it's, it's not very, very new, but it's still, uh, compared to monopiles, uh, uh, less developed. Well, yes, cor correct. Eh? Though we've been uh, installing suction piles over 20 years now. Uh, for offshore wind, uh, there are three offshore wind farms uh, where we use the suction pile technology into, uh, for suction pile foundations. And of course, this is picked up by the Chinese and they appreciate the fast offshore installation time. 
Um, and often uh, you see they, they can s speed up with uh, fabrication capacity. But offshore insulation is, is uh, often uh, slower than in Europe we see at the moment. And suction power technology uh, gives that, uh, them an advantage. Related to, the f to, to this first question, um, uh, in what areas, uh, Pete, do you think that the Chinese are most advanced in technology? And in what areas they are maybe uh, confronted with bottlenecks? Uh, do you have an idea on that? I think turbine-wise, like, like Jan Krein says, they are m much more flexible in adopting new technology. Yeah, they, they, they have very large OEMs in China, yes? Uh, OEMs, okay. yes. Yeah. So, so, but also, as I said, technology is maybe lagging a little bit behind uh, Western turbines in size, in yes. advancement, but they are very willing to adopt new concepts. Like 10 years ago, we have designed a concept called active wake uh, control, where wind turbines are interacting together to create overall uh, optimal performance, yes. reducing loads on other turbines. In, in Europe, it's been a real uphill battle to get it adopted. Slowly, slowly, we are adopting that. In China, people are much more open. Yeah, yeah, yes. They are less willing to pay for, for patents. That, that's another battle, and I will come to that later. Yes. But adopting that new technology, embracing it and deploying it, no problem at all. Learning by doing is, is the adagio. Yeah. And do you agree with it? We just discussed the, the turbines, but with regard yeah. to insulation? Yeah, correct. We, we, we also see that the tendons in, in uh, insulation, uh, that there's a, a, a tremendous uh, uh, openness for new technology and, and uh, adapting it. And respect of, about the strength, uh, it's, it's incredible how fast they can develop an offshore wind farm where it takes in Europe maybe five years. They manage to do it within two years. Um, that's also, of course, um, a, a maybe a weakness, eh? because maybe risks are overseen, uh, maybe things are not that detailed, but it's also a very big strength if you can uh, adopt so fast. Okay, thank you. Um, gen gentlemen, um, the, what I've learned is that the Chinese government has, has supported the offshore wind market with a robust uh, support uh, mechanism, a feed-in tariff, and we've learned that from 2022 onwards, uh, new offshore wind projects will not receive central government uh, subsidies anymore. And this has led now to a short time rush because developers, they want to get their wind farms connected to the grid as fast as possible uh, before the cutoff of uh, subsidies uh, will start at the end of uh, 2021. Um, what do you think, what will be the effect of this cut down in, in subsidies uh, for the offshore wind deployment in China? Is, um, will it slow down or what is your opinion on that? No, I don't think so. Because the volume, the drive to, drive to build new energy, to build renewable energy is enormous. Energy consumption is growing, technology adoption is growing, the demand for power in general is growing. And renewable energy offers a vast potential and can be built quite quickly. Yeah. And there's a huge supply chain working offshore and that can be deployed. So I think it will continue. It will continue, but uh, yeah. do, do they have to, to work more efficiently in the future maybe? Or? Yes, that, that I, I, I see also all, already now we see more openness to get more technology involved to improve on standards, to get cycle times down, to get technology up, to be ready to drive the cost down after subsidy ends start 2022. Yes, I see that already happening, and that also aims for me at continuing the same trend, but at much lower cost. Okay. Yeah, I think more or less the same, uh, and I think it's good for the industry. I think it's good that they can have a, a deep breath after next year. There's a lot of uh, going on next year, in, in, in re really stressful, uh, I think, for many installations. Next year will be a very stressful year for the Chinese offshore wind market. It will be very busy, yes. yes. So I think that it's good if that, uh, and maybe there's a small extension in, in, in deadlines because we, we see a lot of uh, happening in one, in one go, uh, but it definitely will go on after next year. Okay, okay. Can you describe, Pete, in, in what way the Dutch companies can add value uh, to the Chinese offshore wind market? Uh, we are famous for our balance of plant technology. Can you say a few words on that? I think if you start at the beginning developing new technology, as ECN in the past days, but as you know, we have a huge reputation in developing new knowledge. We are among world leading knowledge institutes. I think that's where we can support. Yes. Also installation industry, of course, cycle times and the pressure on cycle times and having better weather uh, resistibility. I think that's also something where Dutch industry and Dutch knowledge can help improve on Chinese industry. 
Yeah. Yeah, so, but you see that EPCI contractors have a hard time uh, uh, to, to enter the Chinese market. You have succeeded. Uh, what's your view on, on, on that? You see also that the big contractors like Van Oort, for instance, or, or Boscalis, these companies, uh, have, uh, for them it's quite difficult to enter the Chinese market. Yeah, yeah of course, we, we enter the Chinese market uh, not as full IPC contractor. Uh, we, we support uh, them uh, in technology uh, where we have added value. And that's especially in the design of suction piles and the interface uh, with, with the jackets uh, itself. Yes. And it's in the supply of, of, of high, uh, high standard equipment for the installation services. Um, of course, we, we, we investigate if we can do EPCI, but of course the, the, the local parties are, are really very well equipped for that. Okay, and uh, do you see uh, room for, for maybe third tier uh, Dutch companies that can, can, can pr provide services in, in subcontracting? Um, I think yes, there are opportunities, uh, like Jan Crane said, if you have a special niche knowledge, yes, there is uh, room for you, but it takes a long time to build relationships. You have, you have to aim for a long pre-investment to, to get acquainted, to build bonds, and then land your business. And then I think you can continue doing that business, but it, it takes a long entering time to, to finally operate it. The, the, the Chinese shipbuilding industry is also quite advanced. Uh, do you see opportunities maybe for, for, for Dutch engineering companies then that can provide dedicated vessels? Yes, I think so. I think they're especially looking for, for uh, vessel designs uh, related to offshore wind and installation technologies. Uh, you already touched upon it, Pete, that uh, doing business in China is, is, uh, can be hard, it can be very tough, uh, you need a lot of patience. Um, is that because uh, or the, that the majority of the offshore wind stakeholders in, in China are state-owned enterprises? Does that make it harder, in your opinion? Is it harder to, to negotiate with state-owned? Uh, enterprises or with private or is that not the case? No, I, th I think it's really culture, management culture, it's contracting, it's, it's trust in contracting. All our documents, all our contracts are translated into Mandarin. And the, all the layers of management have to be convinced that no. this is a good contract. And of course you also have Chinese staff. Yes, we, you, you need that, yes. we need that. Yes. If we do not talk Mandarin during projects, it's very hard to get progress and to come to a, a goal that's mutually accepted. So communication throughout from beginning to end is totally vital. And you agree on that? Yeah, and you also have Chinese staff. Yes, we have Chinese staff and even growing in Chinese staff because as we see doing execution, we, we need more and more Chinese staff uh, to have things translated and things more explained in more detail. And, and do you have staff uh, both in China uh, and in the Netherlands? Yes, yes, correct. Okay. Yeah, we have business development uh, here in the Netherlands and also due to Corona we were forced to have uh, more local Chinese staff. Okay. And can you say a little bit more about uh, 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 about your, your first contract? Uh, because it, it can be really tough, and then sometimes you think, well, uh, maybe uh, they are not going to buy our services, our equipment. Yeah. But how was it? It is. Uh, I, I, I was not there when we, we signed the first contract for SPT in China. But there is a difference between uh, state-owned companies, I think, and, and private companies. Uh, I think we need to uh, appreciate that state-owned companies are very, very large organizations with very strict rules. Also with many levels. With many levels. So w where they tried to reach out to you, for example, in payment schedules, uh, we think, oh, well, what is this for an offer? For them, it's already a big step. And for us, it's still too a little. But you really have an understanding, and that's why you need to also Chinese people in your organization, what's happening on the other side of the table. Um, yeah, when you ask about my, my, my first uh, contract, and for, for me it was really surprised after uh, four or five months of negotiation, and the deadline didn't change because it had to do with the, the 70 years celebration of, uh, of China. Yes. Suddenly we were really at the right last steps of the negotiations, and, and we just sent the last uh, email with the, uh, with, with the final cost reduction, and uh, in a surprise uh, we, we got the answer, okay, you won the project. Um, and then a couple of hours later, we got, we got another phone call. We said, well, we, we, we want to double the order. <laughs> okay. And, and that's such a surprise when, when you think, hey, well, but first you didn't have any money and now yes. you want to have double. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, they yeah. just wanted to have a, 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 as a risk mitigation. They think, okay, let's build two. 
So it is really surprising. Yeah. Is, 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 is it also your experience with China that that some, sometimes you you think well it's gone the wrong way, but then suddenly it it, it changes. It, it changes definitely, but typically it changes down. The, the question typically is high, yeah. and the first project is typically a lot smaller. Yeah. Then ordering the double, we have not experienced that. Yeah. That's a funny event. Yeah. Well, we, a, yeah. we see it actually more and more. We see it also with, uh, like, uh, the one of the projects, the Fujian Shangla, we showed. Uh, it started with 15 foundations, and now it, it grows up to uh, 74 foundations. We see if they see the benefits of, of the technique, the, the, the contracts will grow. Okay. And speed of installation, of course, is yeah. an important factor. Yeah. 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 Well, uh, what advice would you give uh, first question to you, Pete, to, to Dutch companies. What would be your most important advice to Dutch companies who still want to act on the Chinese offshore market? It's, it's going to be the biggest market of the world. So if you are in technology or in, in, in knowledge provision, there is definitely a big market. But please plan ahead. Don't think you're going to enter within a year and have big orders. Really have a long breath, consist and then take up the, the, the challenge. And, and then you will have business, but it will take you a number of years to build the bonds, to get the market. But that's difficult for smaller and medium-sized enterprises, of course. They don't have this, this long breath, maybe. So uh, other route is indeed on the back of, of, of you know, Dutch service providers and be part of their supply chain. Okay. Yeah. Is, is it possible for this company to, to jump on, on the SPT bandwagon, so, so to say, and, and to, to, to... Well, I must say, for instance, already... Uh, well, for technology providers, uh, yes, of course. Um, and and uh, what you need, uh, A, you need to start with a Chinese person who knows the business in, in China, but also knows your technology, uh, because at the end he needs to explain. And he also needs to know what, what limitations are. And I think, furthermore, you need to be prepared with your organization eh, because everything in China is fast track. So if they have a question or a problem, you need to be able to, to respond to it directly. And we notice that it's also quite uh, a constraint for our own organization. Um, people have to run faster than they used to do. Yeah, you have to be very efficient, very dynamic. Yeah. Uh, uh. So you have to be prepared for that. Okay. Where do you see, and that's maybe, maybe also interesting maybe for uh, the smaller and medium-sized enterprises, where do you see the, the, the added value of organizations like uh, Holland Home of Wind Energy, uh, the Netherlands Enterprise uh, Agency, RVO, or our diplomatic uh, network uh, like the Consulate General in, in Guangdong? How can they support our business? Well, organizing or joining an event in China takes up a lot of organization. And, and the, the parties that you mentioned are really material for us in, in supporting us in joining these events. It saves so much of preparations. They reach parties and persons coming to the table that we would never get to the table on ourselves. So that, that's vitally important, yes. And how does it work in practice so when you join a trade mission or a trade show? Do you have to immediate to, to, to contact the Chinese uh, companies that, that you have spoken to? Or how, how does it work in, in practice? And what kind of communication tools do you use? I've learned that, for instance, that if you use email, they will not answer it, but they use WeChat. Is, is, yeah, we, we chat is a very uh, favorable way of communication uh, in China. I think if, if you join an exhibition, uh, make sure you, you have uh, a translator with you who, who speaks Chinese. Um, and I think indeed uh, those organizations you mentioned uh, really uh, provide a stepping stone uh, to get introduced in a company, uh, in a country like China, for introduction. But we also know that it can be convenient uh, during execution. Uh, we also got some great help from the embassy of the Netherlands uh, get, getting uh, uh, per working permits uh, during uh, the COVID uh, lockdown uh, situation. Okay, okay. You ask about tools. Yes. Yes. Skype does not work at all. No. Teams, on the other end, does work. Yes. Zoom, of course, is a China favorite. Yeah. And China has many communication channels by themselves, which are quite hard for us to install. But indeed, Teams seems to work quite well. And Zoom is also a China favorite. Yes, yeah. but email with China? Yeah, email without a problem. Okay. Yeah. And of course WeChat. Of email course WeChat. does work. Yeah. It, it does yeah. work, okay. Yeah, yeah. For, the other end, for them it's easier to communicate the, through WeChat. 
Okay. So you also get documents through WeChat, which of course for us inconvenient to get on our own uh, systems. And, and maybe one last question is: on, on, uh, sometimes I hear that that you have to, that you need contacts uh, or, or uh, relationships, guanxi in, in Chinese, on more levels, also within the higher as, as in, the, in the lower levels of a Chinese company. Do you agree on that, or is, is your experience more that you talk with a higher level? Well, it varies. Of course, it's it's better if you can talk at, uh, at multiple levels, but it's not impossible if you only have one good entry. But of course, uh, the people you talk to, if they do something new, they want to be backed up. So the more levels you can reach, the better. Okay. Yeah, I totally agree. It, it really helps to, to know the engineer, to understand their problems and that to answer those problems. But you also need to answer to the manager that this is really of, of strategic importance that they should buy this. Yeah, yeah. Cannot do without. Okay. And then the manager backs up the engineer and then you have a working relationship. Yeah, you need multiple layers. Okay. Yeah. Well, gentlemen, um, it was a very interesting uh, discussion. Thank you for that. Um, we touched upon your uh, uh, experience here in China. Um, and on the Chinese offshore wind market. Uh, thank you, Pete. Thank you, Jan Krein. And uh, I want to thank the audience for, uh, for uh, listening to, uh, to this webinar. Thank you. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, for me as a moderator, uh, this was a very uh, interesting um, uh, webinar. Um, Technology-wise, the Chinese are catching up uh, very quickly. Uh, they are not afraid to implement the latest uh, technology. As a matter of fact, they are very flexible to uh, uh, adopt new technologies. And fabrication-wise, the Chinese are very capable, capable to produce in an enormous speed. Um, Dutch companies can bring innovations to the Chinese market, like the also uh, the former speakers have uh, informed us. And there's a big pressure to shorten the cycle times for installation. Um, yeah, and, and very Im important, I think, uh, the advice that, that both gentlemen gave is um, uh, please plan ahead, um, uh, be prepared for your organization um, for, for working with China because everything in China is on the fast track. You have to be able to respond quickly to questions or any problems. And this will have a constraint on your um, organization. What I've learned from, from this uh, gentleman, from these gentlemen is that for Chinese clients, you maybe have to run faster than for uh, European uh, clients. Um, now let's go to uh, the last presentation, and that is of Mr. Um, uh, Fushin uh, from Shell. Mr. F Fushin, um, the floor is yours. Hello,大家下午好,我叫福新,来自于壳牌中国新能源海上风电业。嗯，壳牌呢，我相信大家或多或少或多都有所耳闻。嗯，它是一个全球性的一个能源公司，然后在全球呢，雇佣着大概八万三千的员工，然后业务呢比较多元，主要是覆盖在油气行业。在二零一六年呢，壳牌呢实现了就是说能源转型，我们成立了壳牌的新能源业务。新能源业务呢，目前在壳牌整个的架构内呢，主要包括六个方面的服务，如下面表中所示：交通出行，然后基于客户需求的产品和服务，可再生能源，能源贸易和供应，基于自然的解决方案，以及壳牌创投。大家从这个六个业务单元上可以看到呢，壳牌关注的是从发电到贸易到满足终端客户需求的所有的能新能源业务需要。下面呢，这边展示的是壳牌在新能源里面的风电业务在全球的发展情况，包括之前大家谈到的风电之清。
s h o p i 很早其实就已经介入到了新能源风电领域的开发和运营，如在二零两千零一年，我们就已经参与了美国陆上风电的开发和运营，在两千年就已经发商了，参加了欧洲海上风电的运营。目前在建的海上风电项目和已经运营的海上项目，主要集中在欧洲以及美洲。对，然后亚洲呢，尤其是中国呢，是我们近期以及未来重点发展的区域。呃，当从壳牌的角度呢，我们追求的呢是像之前所说到的，从发电到贸易到满足客户需求，整个价值链的一个贡献。下面这个图呢，给大家做一个实际案例的展示。我们在荷兰呢有一个海上风电厂叫 HKN， 这个项目呢容量大概是七百六十七十六万千瓦。这个项目呢，本身产生的海上风电呢，将用于三个方面。第一个方面呢，是直接用来制氢；第二个方面呢，是把发来额外的电呢用来贸易；第三部分主要用来我们自己的一些化工厂，包括我们一些场站的自用电。在第一部分，我们通过海上发电厂产生的绿电呢，绿电主要供应我们的炼化厂作为原料来生产产品。然后第二部分呢，我们是用在我们的交通用途用途上，比如说加氢站，给重卡提供加氢的能量。通过这个图解呢，主要想和大家展示呢，壳牌追求的是一体化价值链的贡献。呃、就是就如刚才各位同行们所说的，现在中国的海上风电呢，聚焦在如何来降低度电成本。但是从壳牌的角度呢，降低度电成本只是从建设阶段和运营阶段。但是，一旦说我们的风电厂建好，电发了出来，我们如何把这个电进行更合理的交易？然后，这些电如何能够在不同的业务单元进行一体化的使用？是我们壳牌关注的重点，因为我们今天的业务主要聚焦到广东。下面这张图呢，可以大家展现一下我们在壳牌壳牌在广东的业务重点。向大家介绍，向大家介绍壳牌在广东业务主要的目的是结合上一张片子。也、yeah, 就像上面片子一样，我们展示的，我们既关注发电，又关注贸易，那又关注下啊终终端用户的使用。比如我们在惠州有比较大的中海炼化市场，那中中海壳牌石油炼化有限公司。我们在广东有我们的加油站和加秋站零售业务。然后我们还有自己的润滑油厂以及我们的沥青工厂，这些这些业务都可以作为我们在海上风电发出来的电的终端使用用户。下面呢，介绍一下壳牌中国的海上风电业务。壳牌中国海上的业务呢，目前是整个壳牌中国。壳牌全球在中国发展的重点
，而且在壳牌中国海上风电的发展是基于壳牌在中国已经开展了一百二十多年的历史和良好的合作经验。简而言之呢，从壳牌的角度，我们正在中国市场积极的寻找潜在的中国本土合作伙伴，来共同参与中国海上风电厂的招投标、开发和运营。结合中国市场的实际的操作经验，我们认为我们可以给这个市场带来如下八个方面的好处。第一点，壳牌是个国际良好的生意，有有具有国际良好生意的公司，有很好的公司品牌。如上面介绍，壳牌追求的是一体化价值体系的贡献。壳牌本身以自己的公司生意作为担保，投资了多元化的社会业绩。大家都所知道，海上风电项目是个重资本项目。那壳牌在重资本项目可以有很好的海工经验进行应用。壳牌作为国际化的公司，尤其在壳牌中国有一百二十多年的服务历史，它可以很好的把国际经验和本土经验进行融合。壳牌作为国际化的知名公司呢，它有很强大的资产负债表，这一点意味着壳牌可以引进相对比较优惠的资金。然后，本身壳牌追求的是整个风电开发一体化的价值贡献，所以我们在成本的减减少减少成本方面，我们追求的是价值链的一体化减免，而不是仅仅追求。风电厂的开发和运营。最后一点，因为壳牌在中国有一百二十多年的业务开展历史，那就证明我们在壳牌的合作的方式和方法是多元的。总之呢，就是基于我上面的一些分享，就是两个点和大家做一个呃分享。第一，壳牌在中国海上风电风产的发展，希望寻找一个强有力的当地的合作伙伴，一起去开发运营海上风电厂。基于壳牌120年的中国本土业务开展经验，我们的合作方式方法是多元的，欢迎各种合作。好，谢谢大家。Thank you, Mr.、Um, Fushin, for your、uh, presentation. Now, ladies and gentlemen, now we have still about 30 minutes for Q and A. So, if you have some questions, please use the chat function.、Um, maybe a first question uh, to uh, Mr. Michiel Bierkens.、Um, Michiel,、um, can you please、uh, tell us a little bit how the Dutch consulate in、uh, Guangzhou can support small and medium-sized enterprises uh, uh, in the Netherlands that want to do business on the、uh, Chinese market? I believe that you have also kind of market scans or business、uh, partner scans. Can you say a few words on that? <clears throat> Yes, thanks.、Uh, I am、um, happy to do so.、Um, yeah, that's in fact, there's、uh, quite a lot of things that we can do to, let's say, service Dutch companies,、uh, especially SMEs who are seeking to become active here in the Chinese markets. Some of which already mentioned during my short introduction.、Um, what we typically do here for Dutch companies. Could be, for instance, organizing of trade missions.、Uh, we can organize seminars.、Uh, we organize technical trainings,、uh, master classes, 
share information on uh, the Chinese markets, but also respond to individual requests from Dutch companies. If any Dutch company has a request on anything that has to do with the offshore wind market here in South China, they, they can contact us. We can organize matchmaking, which means the B2B. We can also, let's say, facilitate in some of the uh, subsidy schemes that are available with RVO. There are subsidies available where we go a little bit deeper into, let's say, doing some sort of a market scan or market survey. And I think the added value that we have here, of course, is that we have colleagues who know the local market, who speak the language, who have a network, have a network of contacts. Uh, and that comes in handy in particular when we want to engage with the Chinese authorities because being a consulate general gives us an edge, gives us an entry ticket with the Chinese authorities. And very often we do that. That is exactly what we do. We go to the Chinese authorities and bring along Dutch companies and pitch on behalf of them. And maybe as a final and more generic point, I would really uh, invite Dutch companies, in particular SMEs, to just contact us if they have any specific question. Too often, uh, I have the feeling that uh, Dutch companies do not uh, know how to find a way to us, or they think that we may be only serving, let's say, the larger Dutch companies. Well, I would say the opposite is true. In particular, when it comes to SMEs, we really have an added value. We can really help those companies in their, let's say, entry policy and the strategy in the Chinese market. So that's an open invitation. If you have any question regarding to offshore wind here in South China, please contact us. Uh, we're eager to help. And if we cannot help, we will also uh, tell you. But I think there's much more that we can do that very often uh, those companies realize. And we're happy to help because as we said, as we learned today, the offshore wind market here in South China has huge opportunities, huge potential, and we're more than willing, more than happy, in fact, to uh, have uh, to position Dutch companies in particular as a means into the market here. Uh, uh, Michiel, thank you for this. Uh, uh, another related question is, uh, do you, uh, as a consulate general, also have a kind of Netherlands foreign investment uh, department that you can also maybe uh, um, support some Chinese companies who want to do business on the Dutch market? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for asking, uh, Arjen. Indeed, we have, we have a team, a dedicated team here of the NFIA, Netherlands Foreign Investment Agency, who are specifically working on introducing Chinese companies to invest, to set up a business, to set up the company in the Netherlands. That has been, that had worked quite successful. They can introduce those companies with, let's say, service providers in the Netherlands. They can inform about tax regulations, any regulatory framework in the Netherlands. And they will help those Chinese companies find their way in the Dutch market. So basically, we work two ways. And that, that agenda, specifically now in times of COVID-19, is still going very well. We see a large amount of Chinese companies investing in the Netherlands, setting up their business in the Netherlands, specifically from South China and more specifically from the city of Shenzhen, in all sectors, including in renewable energy. So that is certainly an area where we can uh, be of help to, uh, to Chinese investors or potential investors. Great. Okay. Thank you, Michiel. Then I have um, 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 a question uh, to Mr. Uh, Fushin. Uh, Mr. Fushin, you told us that um, um, Shell has acquired a French company, Aolfi. That is, um, um, that company is uh, very well versed in the floating wind uh, industry. Are you anticipating uh, more activities, and maybe also in China, uh, uh, on for floating wind? Can you play, uh, please say a few words on that? Oh, thank you. Um, uh, currently, is Chaopai is in 2019 sold to Open Company. Yeah, yeah, uh, Yaofi in 2019. 
在法国呢，我们有一个二十八点五兆瓦的 G G B I 项目。在韩国呢，我们大概有一个一点四 G 瓦的服饰技术服饰项目。嗯，所以说三个项目在不同的阶段，但是都是在壳牌服饰技术方面的一个应用。我们的主要的目的呢是要研究服饰基础以及风机如何进行耦合，以及长距离输电如何来降低成本，以及最后一点如何通过海上风电进行制氢。Uh, thank you, Mr. Shinfu. A related question. I heard you say that you're going, uh, you are involved in the Korean, uh, Korean floating um, uh, offshore wind market. You mentioned 1.4 gigawatts, so that must be four gigawatt. Yeah. 1.4 gigawatt. Yes. So yeah. That that that's, must, that's a commercial project. That's a commercial project. So uh, if we have uh, a best case scenario, in a best case scenario, when do you think can this project be implemented if everything goes very smoothly? Um, Okay, thank you. Um, then I have a question from Chinese audience. Um, the question says, um, do you use wind turbine tower cleaning and painting robots in uh, robots in the Netherlands. Is that something that you could address, uh, Pete? <clears throat> so do you use wind turbine tower cleaning and painting rob robots in the Netherlands? Not commercially. Uh, products are being developed right now, but they are not in operation as far as I know. So all around, all around Europe, many research projects are running for uh, blade inspection robots, blade repairing robots, blade cleaning robots and blade painting robots, but they are all um, very small scale steel. Okay, thank you. Then I have a question to Mr. Jan Krijn Mosselman. Um, uh, Jan Krijn, the um, suction bucket piles, um, um, that uh, are they produced in, in China or in the Netherlands? No, the piles itself are, are uh, all supplied from uh, Chinese fabrication locations. Okay, okay. Which we uh, bring in from the Netherlands. So, so the design is from the Netherlands or is it a co-production? Uh, no, the the uh, sorry, yeah. the section yeah. part itself uh, we design in the Netherlands and we, uh, we cooperate uh, with Chinese design houses uh, for the full uh, design of the foundation. So there we have an interface on the connection of the the, the suction pile uh, of the jacket and the suction pile itself uh, and of course uh, in the stiffness matrixes uh, and, and load transfer uh, there we have the interface okay thank you thank you um then i have a question for mr uh chang li of guangdong uh salvage is mr chang li i'm also looking at you karen is mr chang li still in the in the, in the webinar yeah, Mr. Li Chang is not here, but I'm now colleague. I'm a homie in here, so I can oh. answer questions. Okay, uh, Mr. Chang, um, I, th I think um, if you look for contractors, Dutch contractors uh, um, like uh, the famous dredging companies in the Netherlands, uh, they are also involved in in offshore wind, like Van Oort and Emboscales. For them, it's quite difficult, uh, maybe, to to enter. The, the Chinese market, like maybe for Guangzhou salvage, it's not so easy to uh, to enter um, the, the European market. Um, but 
do you have as Guang, um, Guangzhou Salvage, um, do you have the ambition also to be active on, on the European market, the European offshore wind market? Uh, okay, I'll, I'll answer for um, uh, Mr. Li Chang because he's in, uh, in a meeting. So, um, uh, in our opinion, actually, we have plans to uh, go abroad. But uh, actually, the uh, because the uh, the capability of Guangzhou Savage is uh, actually is, is even not sufficient for the for the Chinese in world for the for the uh, offshore wind construction. But uh, now we are now doing the project in Vietnam, and also we are looking for some project in Korea. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. I think it's, uh, from the uh, next year and to the uh, 2020, we are going to uh, going to the Vietnam market because the market is also the boom in China right now. And, and are these projects in Vietnam, are they near shore uh, projects or for real offshore wind projects? Yeah, very near for and actually near shore. The, 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 the water uh, depth is around five meters to 10 meters. Okay, okay. Thank you, thank you. Um, then I see a question. It's a little bit of a general uh, question. Um, um, electrolysis has been touched upon during this webinar. Um, would anybody of the panelists give some information about uh, electrolysis products? Is this something for Shell or TNO to say something on this? Otherwise, we can just. Um, that will be difficult. Mm, I can. I can. I, I can answer the question. Okay. Yeah. Please.嗯，从壳牌的角度，目前风电和制氢是在联合的进行应用。我们去年十二月份刚在张家口成立了一个合资公司，这个合资公司呢是用张家口的陆上风电来进行现场制氢，然后为二零二二年冬奥运会
but the suction bucket may just need one day to finish all the construction. And um, you know, in, in Guangdong province, uh, the sea state is very, uh, it's not very good, it's very bad. So you, you need to uh, find a good solution to, um, to uh, get more construction periods. So suction bucket is a good solution. Uh, of course, suction bucket uh, needs more uh, accurate geotechnical condition. So uh, in the field design or in the front stage of the uh, design stage, we need we need more details about the so. I cannot hear you, Mr. Yuan. I'm sorry, my network is, 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 is unstable. Okay, no, no problem. Yeah, we can hear you again. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, and we need uh, before we uh, design the suction bucket, we need more details about the soil condition. So, if some, uh, if a place need, uh, if uh, uh, one wind turbine foundation, uh, whether the jacket foundation or monopel or suction bucket. I think if the uh, su suction bucket or if the monopel can be used, then we use the monopel. And uh, in the future, I think the trend is uh, if we can use the suction bucket, I think suction bucket is uh, one of the best option. And uh, that's my answer. Thank you. Thank you. Xie -xie, Xie -xie. Maybe uh, a question also to uh, Jan Krein. Uh, what about the, 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 the fabrication of, uh, of, the, of these monopiles. If you compare, for instance, uh, uh, monopiles and jackets, that it takes much more time to, to manufacture jackets uh, in comparison to monopiles. How is that with uh, suction uh, bucket uh, piles? Do you also lead uh, a long lead time for, for to produce uh, them in, in serial production? Well, I think in, in general, the, the situation in China is very different than we see in Europe. I think in China there's not such a big difference between the fabrication of, uh, of jackets and monopiles, and and actually, yeah, the same applies for 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 the suction piles itself. Um, fabrication capacities, but also the hours uh, yard run, uh, uh, usually just 24 hours, um, makes the la extra labor, uh, which is a constraint in, in Europe, uh, which is not so much in, in China. So you see quite a, a large uh, speed of fabrication. Uh, we see that now for projects we have been designing <clears throat> and uh, are built uh, only within uh, a month or two months. And that's full jackets with suction piles in China. Okay, okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I don't see any questions anymore. So um, I think we've come to uh, the end of this webinar. I think that we, we can conclude that, that China and the Netherlands have a, a, a common goal on climate issues. And, uh, and we both have to solve the ever increasing demand on, on sustainable energy. And this cooperation can be um, uh, intensified because both countries face the same problems and same challenges. And there are many opportunities for, for Chinese companies doing business in the Netherlands in, in Europe, like we have seen in the webinar of last November, and for Dutch companies, if they want to be active in, in China. But um, be prepared, that's the message, be prepared if you want to be active in China um, and, and make a contribution um, to uh, cost efficiency, because that's very important for China in the future. Um, yes, I hope that we can organize uh, uh, like Mr. Birkens has said, uh, after Chinese New Year, uh, a new webinar. The topic can be uh, a topic that real of uh, of mutual interest is system integration, energy storage, and green hydrogen. 
uh, both the Netherlands and China are, are uh, very much involved in this. And um, maybe that could be uh, a topic. Uh, I see also a lot of questions on floating, could be a topic as well. So I hope that we can keep the momentum and, um, and organize a webinar for, uh, for the short time, because I think until June, it will be very difficult uh, for Dutch companies to travel. At the moment, we are in a severe lockdown and it will take some time before everybody in the Netherlands is vaccinated. Um, before I like, uh, before I, I conclude this webinar, I, I want to thank you for all your uh, uh, participation. I want to apologize, uh, apologize a little bit for for um, um, for the connection. It was sometimes uh, bad, but okay, you can do not do so much about this. I want to uh, thank uh, today's speakers for sharing their knowledge, in particular the Dutch Consulate General in Guangzhou the Netherlands Enterprise AGRVO, Guangdong Electric Power and Design Institute, and uh, Guangzhou Salvage, and, and of course also um, the Dutch presenters. Um, ladies and gentlemen, uh, thank you very uh, much for all your hard work may making this webinar possible, and I wish you a pleasant evening in China and a good day in the Netherlands. Thank you and goodbye. <laughs>